Mario boldly goes where he's gone before in his first sequel to a 3D platforming game, and also the first platforming sequel he's done for a home console in over a decade. Does Galaxy 2 come down with a bad case of sequelitis, or does he prove that all a game really needs is solid controls and creative level designs? The story is the only element of the game where it feels as if nothing creative was put into it, but were you really expecting anything different? Stories and games should only be judged if they take themselves seriously. Galaxy 2 doesn't, and thus no one cares about it. Do we really need any other motivation besides the princess has been kidnapped? The only thing I'll say is Peach must make one really good cake if Mario is still going through all the trouble of rescuing her. Every move from the first Galaxy and past games are back. The triple jump, long jump, back jump, side jump, wall-to-wall -wall jump, spin attack, a cursor, a second cursor for co-op, ground pound, crouch, crouch walk, and the secret homing attack. Nearly every power-up returns from the first Galaxy, with a few exceptions. The Ice Flower suit is gone, but it isn't missed very much because of the switch that freezes water and lava, and the red star is absent, which I did find disappointing. What's strange is that the other power-ups brought back from Galaxy 1 besides the Fire Flower suit are very rarely used. The Bee suit isn't used that much, and the Spring and Boo suits are only used for one star. Which begs the question, did they really need to bring them back? The look and feel of the game haven't changed a bit. Which confuses me deeply on the inside because while it may seem as though I'm playing the first Galaxy again sometimes, it's almost impossible to top the best controls and graphics the Wii has to offer. Speaking of controls, I always found it impressive that it knows when I'm picking up star bits really fast and when I need to perform a spin. If you've played either Galaxy games, you'll understand that. So what's new and different? Well, the Galaxies mainly. There's a total of 49 Galaxies, and about 45 of them are completely brand new. Instead of traversing through a hub world, you now have to take the classic map route that will open up new areas once a certain amount of stars have been collected. And if you still want a hub world to explore, you can always run around Mario's face. You can talk to other characters, earn some extra lives, or just play around. You'll also occasionally come across hungry Lumas that will transform into galaxies once they've been fed enough star bits. There's also another hungry Luma, but I'll come back to that real soon. As with the previous Mario Galaxy, you'll find yourself collecting stars to progress throughout the world maps and grant stars from the bosses to open up the next world. Located within the first star of each galaxy is a Comet Medal that will unlock the Prankster Star Comet once enough Comet Medals and stars have been collected. The challenges range from collecting 100 purple coins, get the star before time runs out, finding clocks so time doesn't run out, and one hit in your dead Daredevil runs. Other times you'll be issued challenges from this chimp who wants to see how many points you can get, or this bird who wants to race against you. Much like the first galaxy, a hidden star will be within another star and the only clue that it's there is a question mark over the star. Usually, it's the other hungry Luma who wants coins instead of star bits, so it's a good idea to collect as many of them as you can because you never know just how many you need. Fortunately, when they've been fed, you don't have to feed that Luma again. The basic platforming element is still there. Jump from platform to platform, collect certain items, defeat all the enemies, etc, etc. On a side note, I wish they didn't bring back the balls, as balancing on those can be difficult at some times, but not too frustrating. Some new elements thrown into the mix are these special stages where if you can defeat the enemies before the music gets too fast, you'll earn some extra lives. But you have to get those before the music gets too fast as well. Sometimes you'll come across this little cube that will give you what's on the top part after you hit it. For a couple of the stars, you'll have to use the motion controls to move a bird. In certain areas, you'll be followed by Mario Shadow Clones. These guys aren't here to help you win a fight. They're here to follow your every movement, and if they touch you, you'll take damage. So try not to go in the same place twice. And if you die enough times for a certain star, the image of Rosalina will offer to guide you to the star. I will never take that offer since I don't want the game to play itself. It just sounds insulting. With a new Mario game comes new power-ups. This time you get two new suits, one new toy, and the return of an old friend. The cloud suit allows Mario to create clouds underneath him when he spins. This allows him to create an extra platform for him to walk on, but the most he can create is three at a time, and touching water gets rid of it. The rock suit gives Mario the ability to roll up on a giant rock when Mario does a spin and run over anything in his way, unless it's something really heavy. The drill allows Mario to go through the planets by spinning. This is actually a lot of fun. I used to wonder why they made it an item instead of a suit, but trying to imagine the drill on top of Mario's head makes me think this was the best choice. And of course there's the return of Yoshi. Yoshi can still flutter in the air for a short amount of time, and if the cursor circles something, then Yoshi's tongue can grab it. Flowers to swing from, platforms to pull out, items to grab and throw back, three different types of foods, each with their own effect, and to eat enemies. 
and he must have been pretty mad to have been left out of the first Galaxy game because he's ready to rip some heads off. If you collected all 121 stars in Galaxy 1, your reward was collecting them all over again but as Luigi. Fortunately, that's not the only reward this time. Whereas this time you start off with Luigi in a couple of places, but if you do get him, you can play as Luigi in all the others. This time, when you collect 120 stars and beat the game again, the Cosmic Jewels, otherwise known as the Green Stars, will appear in every galaxy. These stars aren't collected by completing new objectives, instead these stars are placed in certain areas of each galaxy and you must collect them. To best describe them, I have placed them in three different categories. There's the hide and seek stars that are hidden in the galaxy and finding it is the only challenge. Sometimes it's not even that hard. The second is the hard to reach stars that are in plain view but might be difficult to obtain. Finally, there's the suicide stars. These stars are very much like the hard to reach stars but force you to throw yourself into oblivion just to have the near chance, the near chance of obtaining the star. After collecting a new total of 240 stars, you'll unlock the Grand Master Galaxy. All I can say is, practice makes perfect, and expect to die a lot. What's interesting for both the Green Stars and the Grandmaster Galaxy is that the image of Rosalina is never there to help you. Meaning if you want those stars, you gotta earn them. The game will no longer hold your hand. Most casual gamers may have a tough time with this, whereas the core gamers will definitely go for it. The main idea of the first galaxy was to incorporate gravity elements around the planets in certain areas. What does Galaxy 2 implement? In terms of new mechanics, basically nothing. So what is the appeal of Super Mario Galaxy 2? That would be some of the most brilliantly designed galaxies that never feel repeated. Some galaxies only implement a sense of challenge. Some of my favorites are the ones that test your reflexes, timing, reactions to the changes in the environments, and how your spins affect the platforms. As mentioned earlier, not all the galaxies are new, but they're there as a way to put in levels that are recognized from previous Mario games. Giant Land from Mario 3, Womp's Fortress from Mario 64, this from a special stage in Sunshine, and two worlds brought back from the first galaxy, plus a world where you fight a majority of the bosses from the first galaxy. It does feel weird that Super Mario World doesn't have a galaxy based off of it directly, but these two galaxies feel the closest. The complaints and issues I have with this game are insignificant compared to how great it is. But that's not going to stop me from talking about them. I'm pretty sure we've all encountered that little problem where running around on a spherical planet can sometimes cause the controls to go a little haywire. It's the only problem the controls will actually give you, but because you usually never die from it, it's usually not that big of a problem. There's a toad that will store your extra star bits and let you transfer them to your other save files, yet there's no bank to let you store your extra lives. Every time you start up a file, you'll go back to only having 5 lives. I didn't need them for the first 6 worlds because I actually blazed through them with this one only giving me any trouble at all, but once I got to the S world, I kinda wish I had them. Even though some bosses take more than 3 hits, they can still be pretty easy. I certainly didn't like having to kill off Yoshi just to get a green star. Most of the levels feel shorter when compared to the first Super Mario Galaxy, and the game sometimes is just too similar to the first one. Sequels in video games are supposed to improve upon the gameplay or add more elements to it and make any little corrections from the previous one. While the problems from Super Mario Galaxy 1 are just minor, you kind of have to wonder why they didn't change any of it at all. While most of the issues I talked about just seem pathetic and really wouldn't turn anyone away from the game, the only real problem this game has is that it just plays so similar to the first one that sometimes you feel like you're playing the first one all over again. But it's thanks to some of the most imaginative level designs that keep this game from feeling like you've been there and done that. Then you factor in that these are still the best graphics on the Wii, a soundtrack that rivals the first one, tight controls, and you have a very strong game. But I don't want to hear rumors about a third galaxy unless they add a bunch of mechanics that keep it from feeling too much like the first two. A 5 out of 5. It's a great game to add to your collection.